And a very warm welcome from myself, Alan Irwin, here at Southport for the build-up to this one. It is Everton under-21s in action tonight against Colchester. They've made the long tre trek up from Essex. Uh, should be an interesting game indeed. Delighted to have alongside me co-commentator Nick Chadwick. Uh, Nick, good to see you. Uh, looking forward to this one? Yeah, even on. Yeah, looking forward to it. You know, it should be a good game. Uh, exciting opportunities for one or two individuals coming into the into the Everton side, but uh, should be a, for another test for for the Everton young players to uh, test their wits. It's been a busy time for these under 21s of late. They've had the EFL Trophy game, which resulted in last-minute drama at Goodison against Mansfield. To, uh, two late goals to take them through. Maybe they've got an eye on that, which is next Tuesday when they're in the last 16 game at uh, at Lincoln. But it's all about development. For these players, isn't it? Yeah, most definitely. I think you know it won't only be results. Obviously, Paul take Keith Southern will be looking at looking at getting a positive result again tonight, like they had last week. Like you say, against uh, Mansfield, I was actually at that game, and I thought uh, a, a younger side against a senior League Two opposition on the night did uh, did really well, and obviously managed to get themselves a couple of goals and and, and get the win at the end. And uh, although victories aren't to be all and end all at yeah. this level, it's always it's nice for morale, it's nice for progression, it's nice for development, and uh, and uh, it. it, it at this level, there is an element of results because obviously the next step is, uh, is yeah. into the first team. I, I think, um, having spoken to, to Paul a little bit earlier, um, there is an eye on that AFL trophy game because it, it, it's a big one for those lads, isn't it, with a, a trophy at stake. In this competition, the uh, Premier League Cup, um, they've struggled a little bit, haven't managed to get a victory as, as yet, but still three games to play, including this one. And tonight against the Colchester side, who obviously are a little bit lower than Everton in terms of the development level, and they've been thumped 7-1 and 5-0 and by Southampton in the last couple of games, so uh, it, it could be difficult for them. It's difficult, isn't it? You mean, I mean, you look at uh, this Everton side last week, they play against Mansfield's first team in, in the yeah. uh, Papa John's Trophy, and then and then tonight uh, you've got Colchester at the same level at League 2 on, on the, on the 21 side, so... Um, uh, at, at, a Category 2 uh, status academy, Colchester, travelled a long way here on a Wednesday evening, so uh, I, I think it'll be difficult for them tonight, but I'm sure they're, get, they're going to be really looking forward to the game, as, a, as far as the Everton players are concerned. It's great experience and different challenges, isn't it, to play against League 2 opposition uh, in, in Hartlepool and in Mansfield in the uh, Papa John's, and then the back playing, uh, playing tonight in a game that they're probably expected to win. And just a quick word on the team tonight, um, Paul's uh, give me the line-up, Sam Cox a youngster making his debut for the under-21s. Uh, he's uh, raring to go. Uh, just a 17-year-old second-year scholar. He'll, he'll be uh, he'll be looking forward to this. Most definitely. And, and it, it, I've said what I've been on when I've been on before. Uh, the beauty about this football club is they give young players opportunity, and it's uh, it's a massive night in that, in that young man's career tonight, and one that I'm sure he, uh, he's relishing. And he's got a little bit of experience, if we can call it that, alongside him in Isaac Price and Tom Cannon further up the field leading the line. Yeah, they're good players at this level for Everton, aren't they? And, uh, and you know, in... in in my capacity as assistant manager at Rochdale, it's nice for me to come and keep an eye on the likes of Tom Cameron, Cameron mm -hmm. and, and Isaac Price and, uh, and uh, cast an eye on and see if they, they want to further their development with potential loan moves. So um, it's nice for me to be here tonight, both in a professional capacity and uh, obviously with yourself on. Well, we talked about Colchester leaking goals. Uh, I think we may just see a few tonight. So uh, Tom, fingers crossed. Tom Cannon will be hoping so, <laughs> won't he? Uh, he'll be hoping for opportunities. and uh, But looking forward to a good game. Yeah, we are indeed. And uh, earlier... I did manage to catch up with Everton under-21 coach Paul Tate. Paul, good to see you. Thanks for your time. Just ahead of kickoff, um, it's a busy period at the moment for you, isn't it? These games coming thick and fast, as they say. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, we're, uh, I think we're playing every three or four days at the moment. Um, so we're a bit stretched in terms of players because we've got the Youth Cup game on Friday as well. So um, a lot of the scholars have gone back to to Leighton squad tonight for for the Friday night game. So in, in terms of how you approach this one tonight, I mean, this is the fourth game in this Premier League Cup, yet to record a victory. Um, it's still not beyond you, though. Three games to play, yeah. is it? So um, tonight could be the night. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we're, we're looking for the performance, um, and then hopefully that brings brings a victory. We've, we've had a couple of decent performances. Obviously, we were disappointed uh, Saturday. There was different reasons why, why we didn't win the game, you know. We, we missed a lot of chances, real, real host of 
chances that we'd normally put away. Um, and we got punished one nil at the end of the game. So, you know, credit to Birmingham, they dug in there and, and they, they did us what we did in Mansfield a few days earlier. So we're looking to bounce back tonight in terms of, um, you know, we want to again create them chances, but hopefully we're good enough to take a couple of them tonight. And it's a Colchester side that, uh, OK, they've had a long journey up here, that's for sure, but uh, they've conceded a lot of goals in their last couple of games against Southampton, uh, getting beat by seven and five. So, in that sense, um, are you going to go gung-ho tonight? No, well, don't look too much at that, to be honest with you. Um, you know, they'll turn up tonight. It's a, it's a huge game for them to come and play Everton. Um, so, they'll be organised. They'll be giving it their all. They'll be a disciplined team. Um, and it's up to us to break them down. So, you know, stick to the principles of play that we've been playing all season and um, see where that takes us. One thing's for sure, when the under-21s have been involved of late, um, it goes right to the final whistle, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great that um, they show that character and belief and they keep going, they never give up. Um, and, you know, we've got players in the team that can, that can score goals, so um, hopefully it'll be the same tonight and they'll, they'll keep going. You talked about the makeup of the side uh, earlier. You've got a, a young lad making his debut tonight, Sam Coughlin. Uh, tell us a little bit more about him. Sam, yeah, he's a second year scholar, um, local lad from Anfield, actually. So he's he's, um, he's chomping at the bit to start tonight. It's his first start for the 21s. He's, he's going to be playing as a number six in midfield. So looking forward to seeing him play. Uh, and it's it sounds strange to say, but you've got the likes of Isaac Price almost alongside him who can guide him through a little bit of experience and he's had that first team experience just about. Yeah, we, Isaac was suspended for Saturday, um, so it's good to have him back. Um, like I say, not sure how long we're going to have him because the first team resumed training this week, so um, hopefully he'll, he'll, he'll go back up and, and join back up with the first team squad after tonight. And Tom Cannon leading the line really up front for you? Yeah, we've got Tom up there. And, um, I'm going to play with the two up front tonight, so give Cat a chance up there, play alongside him. Um, he did really well on Saturday when he came on Cat here, so he's earned his chance, so it'll be interesting to see how them two do tonight together. Have you got one eye on next week as well, because the, it's the a AFL trophy game as well, isn't it, <laughs> at uh, Lincoln on uh, Tuesday yeah. night? Yeah, yeah, obviously, you know, that's been a big tournament for us, big, big competition, so uh, we're really looking forward to that, but uh, tonight's the most important one. Well, wish you the best of luck. Hope it goes well under the lights here at, uh, at Southport. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. So, inside Hague Avenue here, the home of Southport Football Club, where Everton under-21s are about to take to the field very shortly to take on Colchester United. Alan Irwin and Nick Chadwick, your commentary team for this evening for this Premier League Cup tie, the fourth game of this Premier League Cup for Everton under 21s and still seeking their first victory having suffered a very very late defeat on Saturday at the hands of Birmingham um, might have seemed cruel but manager Paul Tate said that it was probably what Everton deserved on the day not a great performance he's looking for better tonight against the Colchester side that have suffered of late losing to Southampton in their last couple of games by five goals to nil at home and last time out a 7-1 drubbing at the home of Southampton so Everton under 21's clearly favourites to win this one against Colchester tonight who've made the long journey up from Essex and they themselves of course play their football in the uh, professional development league Southern Division let's take a look at the Everton lineup tonight named by uh, under-21 coach Paul Tate, Jean-Luc Laban in goal. It's going to be three centre-backs of Reese Welsh, Joe Anderson, the skipper, and Elijah Campbell. Uh, the wing-backs will be Liam Higgins, the uh, goal-scoring hero from the game at Goodison against Mansfield a week ago. Uh, Mackenzie Hunt on the left-hand side. Sam Cotlin, uh, youngster, making his uh, under-21 bows tonight. He'll play a, a holding midfield role ahead of him. Halid Jampata. And Isaac Price, I suppose Isaac Price brings a little bit of experience into the midfield and ahead of them. Tom Cannon, who can hopefully fire the goals, and Katia Kiate will play a role alongside him. So an interesting lineup, and with plenty of games uh, coming the way of the under 21s, then uh, he's had to make a few changes, of course, as you would expect. 
Colchester have made uh, a host of changes from their last game, which was the 7-1 uh, defeat at the hands of Southampton. And it is a side, basically, that shows only four players from that lineup retaining their places. So Ted Collins in goal and uh, the side, as you can see, the likes of the uh, players who retain their place as well. Ryan Lowe uh, is one such player and uh, another is Fevier and uh, Edwards as well. Frankie Edwards, who will, uh, I would think, play at the uh, back. Substitutes for Everton tonight. Jack Barrett is the substitute keeper. Odin Samuel Smith is on the bench as opposed to his uh, twin brother who misses out tonight. Isaac Heath also there, Luke Butterfield and Troy Smickle James. So uh, whether we'll see the introduction of uh, any of those remains to be seen. Our man in the middle is Paul Marsden. And we are almost set here. So the uh, skipper's being called to the middle. Joe Anderson is uh, wearing the armband for Everton tonight. And uh, Ryan Lowe. It's not the Ryan Lowe that you know, who's uh, the captain of this Colchester side. So all set. Handshakes from the officials. I'm just about ready to go. What are you expecting tonight, Nick? Interesting game, isn't it, Alan? Good evening. Um, obviously, there's the experienced players, and, and I use the experienced uh, term loosely, but there's, there's players who are experienced at this level with Campbell and Welsh and uh, Joe Anderson, uh, Tom Cannon, Isaac Price, and then you've got, obviously, the, the younger players coming into the team. Sam Coughlin, big night for him tonight, and he's... Uh, his under-21 debut, so it's, a, it's an interesting team. It's a good fixture for, for these young Everton players, and uh, as you say, tough uh, tough journey up for, for a young Colchester team who, uh, who I believe travelled on the day, so it'll be interesting wow. to see how they start the game. <laughs> well, indeed, yeah, long coach journey, I think, and uh, Everton attacking from left to right as we look, and immediately a free kick for a foul on uh, Sam Coughlin, who uh, got his... Foot on the ball fairly early on in the game, wearing the number six jersey. And Everton deliver the free kick over towards this uh, near side, our right, and it's uh, cut out comfortably enough by Ryan Clampin. Here is Clampin on that left hand side. He's given the ball to Tom Cannon. He's presented it on a plate for him, and a real chance for Everton early on. And they are in front inside of a minute, just 40 seconds on the clock. And Everton lead here thanks to a gift from Colchester. But it was taken well by Tom Cannon as he has done all season. Everton in front inside the first minute. Just commented, Alan, on the long journey that Colchester have had up here, and it's a disastrous start from their point of view. Long journey up, first first minute of the game, try and play backwards and square. Couldn't have passed it to a to a worse player in terms of a Colchester point of view. Uh, with Tom Cam Tom, Tom Cannon, the form he's in, got the winner last week, and within 40 seconds he puts Everton he puts Everton one up. Wow, what a start for Everton and uh, Colchester just carry on where they left off against Southampton. That 7-1 drubbing we talked about in their last game and Everton couldn't have asked for a better start. I know it's nearly Christmas, but that was a gift. Yeah, in terms of a, a, a start for Colchester, they need to play the ball forward and looking to play back and square. And Tom Cannon never looked like he was going to miss that he finished with a plumb, pulled it inside. Great foot with his, uh, finish with his left foot, but a great start for him, and he'll be looking to uh, to add to his goals tally tonight, I'm sure. And why not? Tom Cannon amongst the goals, and it's his 12th for the under 21s this season. Delight for the uh, Everton youngsters, and Paul Tate will be pleased, and I think for the likes of uh, Sam Coughlin as well, that will just relax him a bit more, won't it? Definitely, I was thinking that before the game. It's a good game for him to uh, for him to come into, isn't it tonight? The Everton should have plenty of the football. Expected to go on and win the game. Now they're one 0 one nil in the lead within the first minute, and he'll be relishing this opportunity tonight, Sam. A foul on uh, Marley Miranda Marshall gives Colchester a free kick, which Lowe just knocked back to his centre backs. 
Colchester will feel a little deflated having conceded so early on but it'd be interesting to see how they react considering they've conceded 12 goals in the last two games it'll be something that the uh, coach is uh, looking to improve upon Dave Hussey is the uh, the coach of the Colchester outfit just looking at Colchester we were unsure how they were going to line up weren't we but it looks like they're a 4-3-3 quite expansive in possession and uh, having already been 1-0 down obviously it's uh, it's not results that is the be-all and end-all but in a cup competition uh, one thing you don't want is to go behind so early and and it'll be interesting to see how the game develops with Colchester playing quite expansive and uh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of gaps and opportunities for these young Everton players well, let's hope they can exploit the opportunities that do come their way so another dangerous ball back to the goalkeeper uh, Collins just got there ahead of uh, Kiate interesting to see the role of Kiate up front I think he's played a little deeper in uh, some of the games this season so interesting to see how he fares right alongside Tom Cannon tonight always been an exciting player as Katia I worked with him when I when I first started coaching in the uh, in the academy at Everton on the under 10s on the 9s on the 10s in the foundation phase he was one of the players uh, who was at the club even at such a young age and uh, it's nice to see him develop and now now Purdue playing in this uh, this under 21 team yeah well, uh, alongside Tom Cannon has already put Everton ahead just four minutes of this game played if you are just joining us Everton were in front inside the first minute a gift presented to Tom Cannon although he still had a fair bit to do and he, he did it very nicely indeed he's confident isn't he Tom Cannon when he goes in you don't think he's gonna he's gonna miss he's he's, uh, he's a player who's been scoring lots of goals he's he's uh, trained with the first team and uh, he, he looked assured when he got that opportunity so early in the game credit to him he took it here he is on the ball oh, 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 just a slip as he tried to turn and the ball was played out for Sayer gets it back inside for Lowe he's trying to dictate things from midfield that sort of defensive midfield role that he's skipping the side from almost letting them have it at the back the two centre halves uh, the seven inside the letting let, happy for the Colchester <laughs> centre backs to uh, to have the ball in possession and then when they try and play into midfield it looks like that that's when they look it look to uh, to nick the ball and then break through them don't forget you can also uh, watch Everton in action on uh, Friday Leighton Baines's under 18s begin the uh, FA Youth Cup campaign with the third round tie against Reading at Goodison at seven o'clock and that is being streamed live for you too so uh, available to you on the Everton YouTube channel brilliant competition the FA Youth Cup isn't it really gives the young players an opportunity to play uh, play uh, uh, at the football grounds or whether it be home or away and uh, I really think it's a competition where all of a sudden the young players start to see what actually what it might be like uh, should they make it as a, as a, as a professional and a a really good competition and one that I'm sure uh, Leighton Baines and uh, we wanted to want to do well yeah it's one that's uh, well supported by the Evertonians as well Everton have won it three times 65 84 98 Tom Cannon just uh, falling over um, well I wouldn't say a rut on this uh, Southport turf but fell over his own feet I think. <laughs> yeah it looked an innocuous one didn't it and sometimes they can be they can be quite nasty yeah. it didn't really feel it didn't really there was no contact from a Colchester player. And, no, uh, no one near him. He fell in a heap, and this could be a this could be a concern for for, uh, for not only Tom but Everton as well. So if he's okay, he's uh, receiving some attention, and hopefully, it's not uh, something too serious. Let's just have a look at that again because, as uh, Nick said, there was nobody alongside him he just uh, missed kicked completely really and uh, just rolled his right ankle yeah. by the looks of things Alan he looks like he's rolled his yeah. rolled his right ankle there just put his studs in the turf yeah fell a bit awkwardly and that can be a problem can't it when you catch those studs in the turf and Everton will be hoping that they don't have to make such a substitution early on but uh, they'll be prepared those lads who uh, are on the bench tonight Looks like he's moving okay. I think he's just had the thumbs up, so um, so he should be all right. But always a concern when they go down uh, with no one, no one really around them. Yeah, he's uh, walking off okay. 
I expect him to be back on. I'm sure, sure, that, I'm sure that early goal, an opportunity to add to, to add to some some more to his goals tally, will uh, will help him want to get back onto this pitch. You know what strikers are like, Nick. <laughs> goals, goals, goals. You have to be a bit selfish as a striker, don't you? I think you have to realise an opportunity to get to add to, add to your tally for the season. I'm sure Tom does that tonight. Well, back underway. The ball is with goalkeeper Tom Collins. Sent out wide to his right-hand side, but the header won by uh, Campbell comfortably enough. These three at the back for Everton, the three centre-backs, play together um, quite consistently now, so they've probably got a, a decent understanding, Nick. Yeah, definitely, you know, they'll know each other's games, they'll know, uh, they'll be able to balance it and cover, cover and balance each other, and, uh, and I'm sure um, they enjoy playing together, and uh, I'm not sure it will be the toughest test they face tonight, but let's wait and see. Sayer with a ball into the penalty area, which does have to be dealt with by uh, Anderson, who got there and made sure, and here's Liam Higgins trying to work the ball away, which he does via a slight defection, picked up by Lowe, and played back for Edwards here. And all the way back inside the Colchester half, Kennedy gets it back to his goalkeeper. Neat footwork from him. Colchester playing out from the back, which is the uh, the modern way. Good solid shape back from Everton, forced them all the way back from the penalty box, all the way back into their own half. He's clamping. Sporting the gloves, as we are on the gantry. I don't think I'd have them on if I was playing, though. Modern, uh, modern feature. A few more layers up here in this country. Uh... <laughs> Dead right. <laughs> Here's Bennett. Just uh, knocked out by Fevrier. Back inside for Lowe. His first real considered spell of possession that Colchester had had inside the uh, Everton half, where they kept the ball for a, a period. And that finally results in a, a poor ball over the top, really, and behind for an Everton goal kick. That'll build confidence in once the, the Colchester ranks, so they've kept the ball, they've passed it and moved it quite well, albeit in the middle and back third, and when they've tried to play forward, give it away, but I think they'll, uh, they'll build in confidence from uh, just being able to have a, get a couple of passes off. So Everton leading by a goal to nil, Isaac Price in midfield for Everton. Wanting the ball all the time. Received some uh, very good reviews, of course, following the uh, games in Australia. Frank Lampard was uh, very impressed with uh, a few of the young lads that went out on the tour. I think it's a good opportunity for young players, and there's been a break in the season. I, I always think there's, a, there's an opportunity for players in, in pre season, and at the end of the season, if there's a cu couple of fixtures that you can get the young players involved but this uh, mid-season break again provided an opportunity for Everton for Everton's younger players to, to play in the first team nice to see the manager uh, make the most of that as well yeah. and include, include these players in the, in Australia indeed yeah it's been a, a strange season but one that uh, has certainly benefited a number of players around uh, football clubs up and down the Premier League I would say might just benefit England, yes, who knows, in this World Cup. But you don't want to be watching that tonight. It's uh, Everton against Colchester. Who cares against about Portugal and Switzerland? 1-0, we've had a goal here. Colchester are looking to respond and uh, almost win themselves a corner, but good defending again by Everton. And they get the ball away by uh, Reese Welsh. And it will be... An Everton goal kick. Oh, we haven't got an enormous crowd inside uh, Southport tonight. Didn't really expect one, but I'm sure there's a few faces uh, over in that main stand that might just be scouting one or two of these players. Yeah, most definitely. I think it's an opportunity for these younger players, isn't it, to showcase showcase themselves for uh, for people who are coming to watch such as, such as myself and, and and other people who work at football clubs who are who are keen to keep an eye on these uh, these young Everton players that at some point they're going to need some experience 
whether that be in Everton's first team or the Football League, in order to them, uh, for them to progress their careers. Indeed. Keontae just couldn't get across to that, but Everton do have the throw on the far side, leading by a goal to nil. And more action for these Everton youngsters on Saturday. We mentioned the uh, under-18s, they play on Friday. Uh, these lads, well, a number of them will be down at Southampton for the Premier League Cup tie that takes place this coming Saturday. So it is a busy period, and as Paul Tate said, they've had to mix and match a bit with the under-18s in action at the weekend as well. Yeah, and I think it's good for the players. I think it's good for them to be active. You know, when I just spoke about some of these players may go into the Football League and the games really are relentless. They come thick and fast. And to be able to build up that tolerance and be able to play Saturday, Tuesday, Friday, Monday, whatever it may be, I think that's a, I think that's important that these players show that they can go and do that because when you are looking to recruit a young player, whether, whether it be on loan or, or sign, it's important that you know that they're robust enough to be able to fulfil uh, a lot of the fixtures. So... Uh, it's important, I think it's a good thing that, that so many fixtures come thick and fast for these young players and also it gives them a chance to, to develop and practice and keep and keep getting better because uh, young players who don't play football, it goes without saying, will not will not develop and won't get, won't get any better. So uh, real positive that Everett, this young Everett side have got so many fixtures but also, and also a, a different array of fixtures and teams to play against. Not too much that Joe Anderson could do with that ball, the free kick was uh, delivered at pace. He got there, but uh, couldn't really get it back to cause any problems inside the Colchester 18-yard box. Ball picked up by Campbell, Price, Hunt, and Isaac Price in possession once more to use Anderson. Cool and composed, and getting the ball forward for... Uh, Mackenzie Hunter chase he's got it into the six yard box squeezed it into the penalty area but Tom Collins was able to drop on it no problem really for him it's a good ball from Joe Anderson wasn't it in behind and uh, he did that really well against Man Mansfield and the Papa Johns as well uh, last Wednesday thought with his left foot his, uh, his distance of his passing his, his, his detail of his passing is very good and uh, again just to, just to reiterate he's playing Mans league, league 2 opposition senior football against Mansfield last week and then now he's got the challenge of playing against a young a young Colchester side and probably have a bit more possession of the football tonight so really good to aid his development to have a different array of uh, challenges and, and uh, people to pick his wits against and what those centre-backs want to see as well is the likes of Mackenzie Hunt getting forward from the wing-back berth and Liam Higgins on the right but Mackenzie Hunt does that well down the the left-hand side and if he can continue in that vein Everton will create opportunities yeah, that's the game in that wing pack position. A good run from Tom Cannon also Tom now. Tom Cannon finding Kiarte, a little bit of time to turn inside the penalty area. Then he tried to clip it over the top that uh, dissected Price and Hunt, really, and neither was able to get anywhere near it. Yeah, great vision, wasn't it, from Kataya? Just, um, just didn't, couldn't quite ex execute the pass, but uh, good move from Everton. They've obviously scored early. There's been a slight lull since that goal. They've sat back a little bit and just rested on that goal, and uh, now it looks like they're just trying to up the pace again, trying to play forward a little bit quicker and, uh, and play a bit, bit more of the football in Colchester's half. I think Colchester were expecting a free kick there and Tom Cannon almost half-heartedly picked up the ball to find Chiarty in the penalty area, but came to nothing in the end and Colchester will be relieved. Everton still have this one-goal advantage, just over a quarter of an hour played. The gloves have just come off here, Alan, in front of us, so uh, we must be warming up. <laughs> Not ours. <laughs> no, ours aren't coming off. That's Ryan Clampin who's uh, decided they are not required. He's got a free kick there, no question about that. Just caught by Isaac Price. Again, Isaac just trying to raise the tempo and intensity, isn't he? Getting a little bit closer, trying to get a bit more pressure on this young Colchester team and, uh, and um, unfortunately on that occasion just, just dived in and give a foul away. Yeah, they are a young side. I will reiterate that in terms of the level they play in, it's the uh, Professional Development League, the Southern Division. They've played 12 league matches this season. They've won four of them and lost six. Everton, by contrast, of course, in uh, Premier League 2. Not back in Premier League 2 action until the 6th of January against West Ham as Kiarte comes forward. Well, Kiarte inside the penalty. A real chance, and he takes it brilliantly. 
all his own work and he was quite prepared to take it on and just slot it calmly past Collins no problem whatsoever and Katia Kiate is on the mark for the under 21s his first goal for them and he is delighted great run down the side by Kiate wasn't it good pass as well in behind penetrating run breaks the lines and then manages to cut inside onto that left foot and a nice finish so they'll be delighted Everton 2 nil up after 20, after 18 minutes played to be 2 nil up mm. both centre forwards have scored they'll be absolutely delighted let's just uh, have a look at that once again Katia Kayate profiting from the ball forward and then decided he could do it on his own and he took it very nicely indeed so two goals as you say Nick from the two strikers great stuff yeah first goal as well for the season this yeah. season for the under 21 so he'll be absolutely delighted with that Katia Kiate and it's important that Everton keep playing them forward passes keep looking to find the runs of the forward players because the movement is terrific up front for Everton Kiate's 18th appearance for the under 21s this season but only his fifth start and as you say the first time he's registered in terms of hitting the back of the net but only his fifth start let's reiterate that he has been used as a substitute uh, frequently yeah and it's difficult to get that run that run of four, uh, form together isn't it when you don't get a run of run of games and a run of starts but obviously with the form of tom cannon and one or two others he's, he's found uh, starts hard to come by so he'll be really happy that he's just uh, sent his sent a message to to paul tate and to keith southern that uh, He's here to show his talent and score some goals. And uh, again, like Tom, I'm sure he'll be looking forward to uh, to adding to that tally tonight if possible. You can see his hunger and desire. He's uh, determined to be involved in the game as much as possible. Here's Mackenzie Hunt cutting infield. Sam Coughlin's ball through, has released Tom Cannon, and he forces a decent save from the keeper that time. It was another clear chance for Everton, who were at times carving Colchester open. Yeah, cutting right through the middle. Great receive by Tom Cannon, let the ball run across his body, hips and shoulders, pointing towards the goal, always looking to get in behind. And the only surprise there, Alan, is he didn't add, he didn't add to, his, uh, to his goal tally for the night. Yeah, good save. Keeper had to get down and get a decent hand to it. He did and turned it behind for the Everton corner, which is about to be delivered short in the end to Kiate. Back outside the penalty area for Cannon. Can't find Coughlin. And Colchester can work the ball forward. And a little bit of pace down that right-hand side is dealt with by uh, Liam Higgins, who came across nicely to cover. Good work from the uh, youngster. Everton, two goals to the good. Two goals up inside the opening 20 minutes. Very nice. Here's Anderson. He's presented that ball to Colchester's uh, Fevrier. One back there by Coughlin. Now low for the visitors. Clamping down this near side has uh, Sayer outside of him. Here is Sayer. Not quite got the room to get a ball into the penalty area. And another decent challenge. Nice to see Isaac being competitive, lovely footballer, lovely in possession of the football, and it's nice to see him putting his foot in and, this, and just showing that, uh, that aggression uh, out of possession. Here's the uh, Kiate goal again. Kept the ball in play very nicely indeed, and it just opened up for him a little bit inside the penalty area, but he slipped his man well in the first instance and got the ball onto his left foot. He was never going to pass that, was he? No, he just slowed down at the right time, didn't he? Got him behind, just slowed down at the right time, invited the challenge, and then just skipped it away. Just here, just skips it away as the challenge comes in, and then he's in at goal. Really positive play by him, and uh, tough for him to get his first goal. Yeah, just the uh, corner of the six-yard box when he fired home. Goalkeeper was left helpless. Just a break in play here while there's a bit of treatment to uh, Colchester player down. Midway points almost of this first half. But it's been a very satisfactory opening for Everton. 
They'll be delighted, Paul Tate and Keith Southern there, won't they? It's 22 minutes gone. Uh, lots of games recently and uh, the appetite for the players to go and win the games has been evident in the early stages. Balls in behind, great movement by the front two. A goal apiece for the front two. It's been a, been a great start for us. Ryan Lowe's OK and he'll rejoin the action as soon as the referee allows him back onto the field. Sawyer and Clanton linking up again down that left-hand side. The ball into the penalty area will run through to uh, Luban in the Everton goal. A regular this season between the posts for Everton. I think of uh, how many players Everton have got out uh, on loan this season. Some of the uh, under-21 players who've had the opportunity and have got first-team football elsewhere to try and progress their developments. The likes of Ryan Astley, Tyler Onyango, Lewis Warrington, Lewis Gibson. Lewis Dobbin as well, Nathan Broadhead and Harry Tyra, of course, who was the uh, regular goalkeeper last season. They're all getting first-team football. And they're all doing really well as well at a good level. It's great to see, isn't it? And I think it's a, a really important part of the pathway for the for these young players. As they play in this uh, the under-18 side, they play in the under-21 side, and then I think it's, it's really important that if they're going to progress, they're going to go out and get real experience in, in the senior end of the game. And... Um, I think, really think that helps develop develop the players and if a, if a young player can maintain a level of performance and maintain, a, maintain games and maintain minutes at League 2, League 1 yeah. and the Championship, it really does uh, uh, help their, pro their progression then moving into what, they, what everyone hopes would be uh, Everton's first team. Well, headed in by Sawyer but he was offside so will be an Everton free kick. Yeah, it just shows you the uh, progress that some of those players have made. I remember him, and, and it was a long time ago now, Alan, but when I when I would play a, a couple of years in the reserves here, and then I went to Derby County initially, and then Millwall, both in the Championship, but it really did help my development and understanding on what it was all about, and it, it is about three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. These games are here to help the players develop, of course, but the sooner they can go out and get some real experience in, within the Football League, me personally, I, I, I think it's a, it's a massive part of a, of the development of any player. Yeah, and of course you have to display the, the right attitude and, and desire when you actually, you know, leave the football club that you love to go out on loan. Chance here maybe for Everton to get a third. Mackenzie Hunt weaving his way into the penalty air, still has it. Teeing it up here for a, another opportunity. Jan Pato with the uh, turn and shot which was blocked. Still might be something that uh, comes Everton's way, although we're back in the centre circle area now with Isaac Price, who's caught in possession. And a chance for Sawyer to come forward. A little bit of uh, support from Bennett outside of him, but again, Everton snuff out the danger. Yeah, that was real good defending then in the end by Joe Anderson, and the wrong decision by Isaac Price. Dribbled, dribbled it in the middle of the pitch when he probably should have passed it. And uh, ball gets taken off him, but good defending by Joe Anderson and uh, ends up tackling and back defending now, Everton, but regain the ball. The ball is with Isaac Price. Flicked with the outside of the boots for Cannon. Heavy touch, really, from Tom Cannon. Allowed the intervention from Ryan Lowe. to goalkeeper Tom Collins from Frankie Edwards. Manchester will not want to concede a third before the break, that's for sure. Everton will be determined to push on and try and take any opportunities that do come their way. I think they've passed the ball quite nicely, Colchester. They haven't really threatened Everton's goal, they haven't threatened the back line. But I think sort of moving moving through from the back third into the middle of the pitch, they passed the ball quite well. Um, but obviously they've just been a little bit open uh, open defensively and Everton have managed to exploit that. Yeah, we just saw that uh, half chance for Alred Jan Pata. Didn't quite get any uh, power on the shot, which was comfortably blocked, really. Everton to Colchester nil. 
Liverpool won back well again by Mpata, who's gone for the return from Cannon, received it, Chiarty's in the middle, Cannon wants it back, Cannon gets it back, fires it in, and Everton do have a third because the keeper could only push it into the path of Mackenzie Hunts, and he was able to just slot it comfortably into an almost vacant net. Everton three, Colchester nil. Fantastic strike by Tom Cannon, wasn't it? First time, it come to him quite quickly, but he managed to get his strike off first time, and great great save, or pushed, parried away, and as you say, Mackenzie Hunt doing what all good footballers do, they follow, follow him for the rebound and manages to put it into an empty net, but just controls that, controls that strike here first time. Great control on that strike, and the goalkeeper can only parry it down, and, uh, and it's into the empty net, as you say, but 3-0 and all going well for Everton. Yeah, the defender really tried to clear, and Mackenzie Hunt was in the right place at the right time, wasn't he? Which is important to follow out anything into the penalty area, and uh, he got his reward all right. Yeah, he's on the move, isn't he? The young fullback for, for Colchester just stood still. Uh, goalkeeper can only parry, and Mackenzie Hunt's on the move and gets his uh, gets his rewards. But again, Everton steal the steal the ball in the middle of the pitch, pass forward, and all of a sudden break through the Colchester back line, and that's been evident for all three goals. Mackenzie Hunt's third for the under 21s this campaign, and the uh, coaching staff, who are just having a word with the Everton players now while there's a break in play, will be encouraging and uh, delighted with what they've seen really and uh, it'll be a case of just maintain this level yeah keep it going don't take any don't take any liberties don't keep making good decisions keep moving the ball nice and quickly um, that'll be the message from Paul Tate and his coaching staff but brilliant strike first time there by Tom Cannon yeah and Mackenzie Hunt on the uh, follow-up to the dismay of the Colchester defender unfortunately it was Matt Yates who uh, tried to get that was caught on his heels a bit. But Collins has been beaten three times. Real good player, Mackenzie Hunt as well. Can play up on that left hand side. Can play. Can play as a left back. Can play as wing back as he is doing tonight. And just shows how adventurous he is. That as a centre forward, having a strike, he's up as a wing back, look, looking to get the rebound. But uh, technically a very gifted player. Yeah. Established himself at this under 21 level, and he's someone who'll be looking to progress his career for sure. Yeah, he is 21 now, Mackenzie Hunt. And that, this is his 19th appearance for the under 21s this season. His 18th start. He's been a, a prominent figure, really, for Paul Tate's side. Yeah, really established himself. And uh, Paul, been to Paul Tate before the game and spoke really highly of Mackenzie Hunt. And I know he's been at the academy for a number of years. And as you say, now at 21, established himself in in this under 21s. And um, and and nice to see him get on the score sheet. And um, as I say, he'll be looking to progress his career, whether that be continuation of this under 21 team or looking to uh, looking to get out in the football league and, and looking to get a, a loan move here's Isaac Price into space for Mackenzie Hunt who's trying to exploit that space again goes for goal by that left boot of his but it was blocked on the edge of the penalty area that time Colchester somewhat relieved that they did get the block in as uh, Yates clears and wins himself a throw in on that far side Real learning experience for these Colchester players. Well, they say every experience for a young player coming through and developing is a good one, but mm. to be 3 0 down such a long way from home, it won't be one that these Colchester, Colchester players are enjoying yeah. enjoying that much at the minute. Great, my journey home as well. It's a long way to Colchester. Here's Cannon for Everton. Higgins, the two goal scorers against Mansfield. And that one into the gloves of Collins. A big game that one next week at uh, Lincoln. One that uh, we're all looking forward to. That's been what's so been impressive from from my, my point of view, watching from afar this under-21 side when they played in the Papa Johns against the likes of Hartlepool, Mansfield, going to Lincoln. They really have stood the, stood the test of playing against the uh, senior senior footballers and, and well-established league league teams and league clubs. And I know Paul Tate and Keith Southern are absolutely delighted with with how the young players have stood up to the the physicality of them games and uh, still managed to be brave enough to play their to play their football and establish themselves against uh, against seniors. And if you look at the results uh, across the board in that Papa John's, uh, we at Rochdale played Liverpool's under 21s, for example, and and. Uh, Managed to manage to beat them, um, but but this young Everton side have really took it to them senior senior teams and, and 
it's, uh, it's credit it's credit to these young players because that that isn't an easy thing to do good challenge by Campbell just slid, slid in at the right time to make sure he got there first there is a Colchester corner the first of the game for them and uh, first real test maybe for this uh, Everton defense tonight high ball in and dealt with comfortably enough Manchester keeping it alive with Karate back to help to try and uh, get Everton further up the pitch and he has one to throw in for Everton on this near side it's focus and con focus and concentration defensively for Everton isn't it obviously uh, Zach will want to be keeping his clean sheet it's important to keep the back door shut and it's, uh, it's as much as about focus and concentration and doing the right things uh, for these young Everton defenders at the minute Three goals up here, Everton. Cannon's touch is picked up by Colchester, who feed it into the 18-yard box, and it's uh, just a touch from Bennett that took the ball out of his feet, really, which allowed Everton to clear the danger again. Initial work from Anifawose. Twenty-year-old midfielder, and if I will say, so throw in for Everton. Picked up by Clampton, he finds Sawyer. He's on if I will say again. It's good feet from him, and it's a good effort on goal as well. He showed a bit of strength and ability there to get the ball out of his feet, shake off the challenge, and get the shot away. Yeah, great work, wasn't it? They haven't had much to feed off these uh, Colchester forwards. But uh, took his opportunity there. Great footwork as he danced his way through, and uh, managed to get a, a shot at goal. He'd be disappointed to hit the, ta hit the target, um, but some good play there. Yeah, Joshua and Fawcy with the first real effort on goal for uh, Colchester tonight. Everton down the other end. Mackenzie Hunt asking a bit much of Elijah Campbell. I think Elijah wanted a bit of the action there. I think he's, he's not a much, much, uh, much work to do defensively. So he's, he's tried to get on the overlap, but uh, just out of play, unfortunate. But Everton want to stay on this front foot now. Leading by three goals to nil. Ten minutes away from half time, although it could be a reasonable chunk of stoppage time in a few stoppages. Welch finds Price. Here's Coughlin. Hasn't really put a foot wrong, the 17-year-old. Uh, He's done really well, hasn't he? And it's nice for him to, uh, as I say, establish himself with a lot of these players who are used to playing at this level, who, who are playing with real authority in this game, aren't they? Yeah, dictating the play, and they've certainly uh, done what they've needed to punish Colchester right from the first whistle. The opening goal inside. 40 seconds or thereabouts. A bit of work maybe defensively now for Everton. Here's uh, Bennett switching it out. Wide, too wide. And it will be an Everton throw. Everton's uh, Premier League two form this season. At home, has uh, only seen them beaten twice. Chelsea were victorious by two goals to nil in the Premier League two game here, whereas Southampton won by two goals to one in the uh, Premier League Cup. That game was played at uh, Walton Hall Park. So home form has been good for Everton. Terrifically coached the Walton Hall by uh, Paul Tate and Keith Southern. You can see that they've got uh, real good standards about them, real good professionalism. The way they play, the way they play, the authority they play with, the confidence they play with, you can you can understand and see why, although it's not, results isn't the be-all and end-all at this level, you can see why results have been favourable. Yeah, and Paul Tate reiterates that um, every time we, we talk to him, it's about the development of the lads. The results will come if uh, the performances and the development is correct. And Everton have certainly got their uh, finger on the button in that department. Good work by Pata. Piate down the left-hand side, and he's making progress to all the, towards the dead ball line, but the 
cut back into the side netting in the end. In fact, it will be a corner. Final touch off the uh, Colchester defender. Been really positive all night, hasn't he, Katia Kyote? Every time he's got the ball, he's looked to go forward. He's looked to be a threat to the back line of, the, of Colchester and just run out of room more than anything there. But nice to see him so positive. You might be on a spying mission tonight. You, uh, <laughs> one or two of these players might be in your uh, your eyesight. It's most definitely it's most definitely part of uh, part of the role to keep an eye on the, uh, the, the very best, best young players. Uh, Certainly within the northwest. Quite right. Everton definitely have some of them. Corner then for Everton. The uh, big boys are up from the back. Welsh, uh, Campbell, but the ball is cleared as far as Hunt. Good control. Laid off for uh, Anderson, who chips it back into the danger area. And it might still fall Everton's way. Reese Welsh tees it up for Mackenzie Hunt. Oh, what a good effort that was. And he wasn't far away from a fourth for Everton tonight. And that was a good dipping effort from Mackenzie Hunt. Vicious strike from Mackenzie Hunt, wasn't it? Just set back to him, straight out of his feet. Only one thought in his mind. Lovely, lovely strike, curling, dipping towards that top corner. Millimetres over the bar, but great strike from Mackenzie. I think the goalkeeper... You can tell by his action that he wasn't quite sure it was uh, going over the crossbar. Good effort. He's having a good night so far. Mackenzie Hunt, that is, not the goalkeeper. <laughs> Here's Price for Everton. Over the head of Kriate. And just tidied up by Frankie Edwards at the back for Colchester. And there's the ball forward from uh, Edwards looking for Bennett to find him, but there might still be something for the visitors here. Pushed out wide to the right and maybe an opportunity to get the ball into the penalty area, though Campbell's doing his utmost uh, along with Hunt, who helped him out. And he gets the clearance up to Riata. Everton 3, Colchester 0, six minutes away from... Half time and a long range effort in on goal. Well, I tell you what, Clampin's effort there, it was a a bit of a, a bobbler for a goalkeeper uh, Luban to deal with, but he, he dealt with it. Yeah, he was heading into that far corner, definitely needed tipping around the tipping around the post, and uh, Everton invited him on, and he thought he might as well take on the shot. Like you say, didn't hit it particularly well, but it was going towards that bottom corner and uh, just tipped around the post. Not sure whether it would have sneaked in, but uh, I, I don't think uh, Luban could take that chance. And uh, he did his bit, as goalkeepers must, of course. Let's get another angle on that. Oh, it's a good hand from the goalkeeper. Certainly, if he was in any doubt, he did the right thing to tip it on the post, Alan, didn't he? Yeah, quite right. Goalkeepers uh, want clean sheets. And, uh, He'll be determined to do exactly that tonight, although he's got to deal with another Colchester corner from one side to the other. Kennedy couldn't quite get his head on it. Final touch off an Everton player in behind. I think the defender of these set pieces will be important to the coaching staff. They'll be looking to see how the Everton players defend these. Uh, it was at the game of the, uh, against Mansfield last week, and they did concede from one of these set piece situations. So be interesting to see how they. Uh, how yeah. they deal with these. Every man back for Everton in or around the 18-yard box, and they are able to get the ball away comfortably enough. The header from Niarte cleared it. Manchester back inside their own territory with uh, Miranda Marshall here. And not a over hit from him. And an acknowledgement from the youngster. Everton heading towards half time, very comfortably placed. Certainly well on course to record their first victory in this Premier League Cup competition this season. Still, still to go to Colchester a week on Monday. Everton's turn to make the long trek down there on the 19th of December. Surely they enjoy that one. <laughs> Southampton first at the weekend, Saturday. play on this near side. Not sure I'm available for the reverse fixture, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Nor me. 
<laughs> I think Darren Griffiths might be back on commentary duty for that one. <laughs> Throw in, which Ryan Planting will take. The man who had that effort moments ago, or a couple of minutes ago. Here's Yates. Mackenzie Hunt trying to hold Colchester up as the ball is played back inside for Yates once more. And worked over to the visitor's left hand side, but Hampton again trying to force one in or we'll just place one in behind Reese Welsh. Just got to be careful, Reese Welsh gets a little bit square with his defending. There's a couple of times they've looked to get him behind him off, off his shoulder, he just needs to make sure he stays open and he's checking the shoulder so he can uh, he can see the centre forward trying to get him behind him but hasn't caused him a problem yet but in terms of, of him and his development and his defending he just needs to make sure he doesn't doesn't get too square to the ball and knows that that's around him at all times yeah he wants you uh, of course had the senior bow in the league cup at Fleetwood earlier in the uh, season he's been excellent every time I've seen him play Alan Reese yeah. really got a Really got a high, a bright future ahead of him, and uh, he's really someone who, uh, as you say, already played in the first team, regular at this level, and he'll definitely be looking to, to step on and further his career at some point. Yeah, it's still only 19. He's been at the club since uh, the age of seven, an England under-20 international, and a couple of senior appearances, and of course he mentioned that League Cup start at Fleetwood, which was a great night for him. Defending though for Welsh and Co. Now is Sawyer. He goes for goal. Again, it's a bit of a bobbler that uh, Luban is behind all the way. Good goalkeeping. Well positioned. And no problems for the Everton keeper. And again, it's a bit loose from Everton. Allowing Colchester to just get their tails up a little bit and uh, try and get something before half-time. And the... Uh, Coaching staff of Everton might just uh, want a word about concentration levels. Yeah, they've shown great professionalism for the majority this last five minutes. I think that's three shots, three shots at the Everton goal. So uh, something, something for Paul Tate and Keith Southern to take into their team talk at half time. That you're three 0 up and, and you've shown great professionalism uh, and application and attitude so far. But keep doing the right things. Keep keep doing the things that get you, get you, got you the goals so far and. And show the dominance in the performance, and don't give this Colchester side uh, a sight at your goal. Confirmation of the stoppage time period here at Southport. Three minutes at the end of this first half. The referee has brandished a yellow card here as well to Colchester's uh, Carl Bennett. So, the first recipient of the uh, referee's card this evening, Colchester's number seven, Bennett, is uh, booked and will need to be careful. A little quiet word probably would have been suffice there, I'm not sure he needed to brandish the yellow card. Some referees like to be officious, exert that, their authority. He's had nothing to do yet tonight, has he? <laughs> not <laughs> really, no, you're right. <laughs> And Which is the best way, well. by the way. Here's Higgins, he can deliver from here. He does. Chance here. Oh, big chance as well. And uh, Keate will be fuming that he didn't get over that ball because he got the control initially and then uh, got well underneath it and high over the crossbar. Just rushed it, didn't he, on his, uh, on his right foot. Popped up in the middle of the goal. Penalty spot, popped up like, popped up nice and just rushed, just rushed it. Got a little bit excited. Just lost a little bit of balance and you know, it's just gone over the bar, he'll be disappointed with that. Yeah, chance for Everton to get another, but skied by Keontae, who's already got one tonight. Everton, three goals up in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Throw in for the visitors. Ball forward from Bennett. Campbell sends it back. Cannon and uh, Keate both in close proximity, trying to.
get Everton some semblance of control of the ball, but not yet, although they haven't given it up, and exactly that, and it's turned into the net by Keate after a brilliant word from Jan Pata to just harry and harass the Colchester defence into the error and force the mistake, which results in Everton going four goals up here. And Kiyati, who scored his first goal for the under-21s earlier, now has his second. Superb work from Piace, wasn't it? In, in terms of um, in terms of desire and effort and and, and the press at three and up right on half time, still showing that desire and determination to really go and press and win the ball. Absolutely superb, superb work. Squares it back. Kiyate is not going to miss that one. He's just missed a missed one, missed a chance before, but he's definitely not going to miss that one. Absolutely superb work in terms of that pressure and able to nick it that high up. Yeah, he was in the right place again. Kiyate, as the uh, half-time whistle blows here, he has two. Everton have four. The night starting oh so well for them inside the first minute ends in the final minute of the half with another Everton goal. This has been very comfortable indeed, Nick. Yeah, really comfortable, and it's the, they've made it a comfortable night with how, with how they've gone about it in terms of their first half, right from the first whistle. Goal within a minute from Tom Cannon, and that set them up, and they've just been relentless in their, in their work and their uh, good decision-making, and uh, real, shown, real, real authority they've shown in the performance, and... Uh, Deservedly to deservedly go in, uh, in, in the half-time break, 4-0 up. So half-time here at Southport, Everton under-21s leading Colchester by four goals to nil. Let's have a look at the, uh, the highlights of that first half. Tom Cannon immediately latching onto a poor ball back from Colchester inside the opening minutes. And he took it with some aplomb, really, didn't he? He took it really well. I mean, the start of the game, a square, it's a backwards pass from the, from the left back. And it's, uh, it's Tom Cannon running through on goal. And, and in the form he's in, you know, he doesn't panic, shows confidence. Uh, really early in the game, comes inside to, to finish nicely on his left foot, but a uh, great start from Everton's point of view, absolute disaster uh, from a Colchester United yeah. point of view. He leaves the defender floundering in his wake and ensured he was uh, sending the keeper the wrong way as well. That's the confidence that uh, Tom Cannon has. And uh, Everton were in front inside the first minutes, and inside 20 they had two, and this was mainly all his own work. Atia Piate skipped away from the challenge into the space inside the 18-yard box and from the angle of the six-yard box he uh, beat the goalkeeper quite comfortably. This was what did it, waited for the challenge, got past his man and did the rest in uh, some style really. Did really well when he wants you to skip past the defender. You see Katara there, his eyes are, his eyes immediately caught, slows that slows him down, skips past, and if you watch his eye and his head movement, he's looking, he's checking, he's scanning what's available. Should have squared it, should have passed it, no, I'll take it on for myself and uh, finishes it hard and low, but uh, real good play by Katara and he's been positive, he's running behind all night, hasn't he? Caused no end of problems. Yeah, I don't know whether we can criticise the Colchester defence there, whether they uh whether they should have uh, put more of a challenge in on him, but here's the third, Everton. Uh, this was the save, in fact, sorry. I yeah, say we, from, thought, uh, it yeah, yeah. we yeah. thought it was going to be thought it was going to be the Tom Cannon. Mackenzie Hunt got the third, which we'll see in a minute, but uh, Cannon will probably feel he should have scored, and uh, in his form, he'll probably feel... Uh, he expected to score. Yeah, I knew what was behind him there, Tom. Knew that they, knew that he'd got a bit of space in between the two defenders. No touch turn, and the only surprise there was he he didn't manage to finish. This is the third goal. Everton in front uh, via those first two from uh, Cannon Kiate made it three via Mackenzie Hunt in the right place at the right time after the initial effort had been uh, saved by goalkeeper Collins, but. Uh, 
all to no avail as far as he was concerned because Mackenzie Hunt was on hand to do the rest. Great shot first time by uh, Cannon. Fantastic, fantastic by Tom Cannon to control that. Hits it hard and low across the goalkeeper and it shows Everton's dominance that Mackenzie Hunt's so far advanced and on the move and ready to uh, to bundle it home, I think we'll call that. Yeah. <laughs> But he has to be there, that's the uh, the main point of that. He's not inside that six-yard box or thereabouts, that doesn't happen, so uh, all credit to Mackenzie Hunt for that. Well, Colchester did have their moments, particularly as the half wore on, and this was uh, very good work by Joshua Anifawose, whose uh, effort was uh, over the crossbar. Nice footwork this, wasn't it? Three Everton, three Everton players in his wake, manages to wriggle free. And uh, as I say, his, his, his only disappointment there will will be that he didn't work um, the goalkeeper Zach. He didn't work Zach uh, yeah. in between the sticks, and uh, he did great work initially, and uh, just hit the hit, hit hit the strike well enough. Just couldn't manage to control it and get it on target. Yeah. And Mackenzie Hunt had another great effort as well, a dipping effort which uh, just went over the crossbar with. Uh, Tom Collins in the Colchester goal, flying across his uh, six-yard box. He wasn't sure. Good effort. Great technique. That just one touch out your feet and then and then and then hit and comes right comes right across it. That would have been a lovely finish had that ended up in the uh, in the top corner. Yeah, he's got a good left foot, hasn't he? And, uh, Slightly different from the goal he scored that one. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he'd have uh, he'd have treasured that one had uh, had it gone in. This was the grass cutter that uh, was dealt with in the end. That was just the start of the uh, a couple of strikes at goal that Colchester had, isn't it? Yeah. The, just towards the end of the half, probably a, a slight lack of concentration from from the defensive players uh, of Everton, and uh, just allowed a couple of shots at goal. But uh, well, Zach done well there because he hasn't had much to do this evening and be able to. Uh, to make a save when when called upon, yeah. is, uh, is yes, yes, that's what he's there for. But also to keep focused and concentration. It was a good save. And this was the final minute of stoppage time. The ball won back by uh, Everton and Jan Pater, and uh, almost into the path of uh, Katia Kiate. Was it a foul? I don't think that's a foul. I think he's nicked that away with his left foot. I was really impressed with that goal, just through the work rate and desire of Jan Pater. Uh, right on half time, he's in such an advanced position to, to show that level yeah, of commitment. That angle desire. seems to yeah. confirm he wins the ball. Yeah, I think the, I think that's great. Pre I think that's a great, great pressure from him, and uh, he will see it a bit more closer. Just nicks it away with his left foot, and uh, and then he's got the quality and the awareness just to square it to to Kate Akiate, who who um, puts it into the empty net. We should talk about uh, Jan Patter as well. He's only 17. And we talked about Sam Copeland, you know, being uh, thrust in as a second-year scholar and uh, given his opportunity. But uh, Jan Patter this season is taking his chance, isn't he? Yeah, I've been really impressed with him. I think he's got about, got about the pitch well. I think he's uh, he's been good on the press, out of possession. I think he's used the ball well. And uh, it's great to see in the 17 years of age making their way in this uh, this under-21 side and I think it helps when they're surrounded by uh, players who are, who have played this level for a season or two now I think you can drip feed two, three, four of these under-17, under-18s in with uh, as I say with the likes of Joe Anderson and Reese Welch and uh, Isaac Price and Tom Cannon it really helps their development and, uh, and they'll be looking to look forward to capitalising uh, on nights like this and then becoming established players at this level themselves. Yeah, they'll all be hoping that is the case. I suppose now in this position, Paul Tate might just feel that he can give an opportunity to all of the uh, substitutes tonight, maybe even the goalkeeper Jack Barrett might get a chance. Yeah, no, I'm sure there would have been a plan before the game in terms of substitutions made and looking to get minutes into certain players, but uh, we spoke about the, the number of games these players are playing at under 21 level at the minute and and as good as that is for development and the variety of challenges and games that they're playing in, as you say, it's a it's a great opportunity. I think tonight to get some of the some of the younger players onto the pitch and give them uh, their experiences and, and get them playing at this level. And of course, you know, we talk about the number of games. I think Paul Tate will welcome the fact that he should use all of the players that he's got at 
at his disposal tonight, given the fact that uh, you know a number of these lads have got to travel to Southampton on uh, on Saturday. Some that he's used previously will be involved even with the under 18s on uh, on Friday night at, uh, at Goodison Park as well, which is uh, one. Again, I will reiterate that you can watch on uh, Everton's YouTube channel and uh, official members, of course, uh, can watch live all the under 21 games, but also this uh, under 18s game as Everton begin the FA Youth Cup campaign with that third round tie against Reading, Goodison Park, 7 o'clock on uh, Friday night. So it uh, should be a good night. Having coached in the, in the academy system, it really is a challenge to get players' minutes and make sure that every player is developing. It's it's always a challenge to make sure that, that every player is trying to receive the amount of minutes possible or the, the maximum amount of minutes possible to, to aid their development and progress on. And the fact that Everton have so many games and uh, uh, are able to do that to each individual is a really po real positive and to give all of these players as many experiences as possible to make them as, as well-rounded um, and as further developed as possible in their in their football and journeys. Yeah, players want to play, don't they? And <laughs> that's a, that's an important aspect. But you can overplay the uh, the kids, of course. So they need to be careful with the development and uh, ensure that they're doing the right things. But uh, Everton do exactly that. I think there's quite a lot in the in load management and, man and players load, etc., etc. But uh, from my point of view, you know, players are. Players are required to be out there, and when they go into that senior end of the game, certainly coming into this part of the part of the uh, part of the season, uh, it's relentless when you go into to Christmas and Easter in particular. And uh, to be able to build up that robustness to to meet the demands of, of first team football is what it's all about for, for players at this level. And from this level to the very highest level, the uh, World Cup, Portugal leads Switzerland 2-0 at half time. Last 16 ties, so it looks like they're on the way to face Morocco, who beat Spain on penalties. Uh, I did manage to see the uh, penalty shootout, and Spain missed their first three penalties, which put pay to their chances. Amazing, isn't it? You think about how technical, uh, technically good the Spanish players are to miss the first three three penalties, and uh, and also there's been a couple of players either rested or left out for Portugal, I believe, tonight. So that's uh, no Mr. doubt will be a talking, talking <laughs> points in the next day or two. It will be indeed. But, uh, they will, uh, I think, go on to take that game against Switzerland and uh, face Morocco. It will be Saturday afternoon before there's a big game, Saturday night, I believe. I think many will be tuned into that. England against France at 7 o'clock Saturday evening. Good night for the pubs, I suppose, that uh, show the definitely. football. <laughs> I know we're diverse in pubs tonight, but I've really enjoyed the World Cup. I, I, yeah. I did question this time of year what uh, what effect it would have on the on the Premier League season. Well, and players and should be coming season. into their peak, shouldn't they? Yeah, haven't haven't played definitely. 13, 14, 15 league games. Most definitely, and I, I don't think it's had as as, uh, as impacted as negatively as as possible possibly I thought it would. Uh, like any other World Cup, it seems the country's got behind the national team. Uh, I've really enjoyed some of the games, it's so high quality and some of the players on show, it's outstanding. Yeah, and a bit more of it uh, to come yet. The, uh, the quarter-final ties take place on uh, Friday and Saturday. In saying that, I can't wait till the football, the rest of the league. I guess, but, well, <laughs> yeah. say Premier League domestically, obviously, I, I've still been going in, at League Two, but uh, yeah. in terms of the Premier League, you know, it's, it'd be great to see that back. Didn't, didn't have such a good result at the weekend, did you? No, not so good the weekend. No, we were um, a goal up and four yeah, one. Yeah, early four goal, down. early goal, and then uh, and then managed to concede four goals at home. So one I'm trying to forget. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I do keep track of uh, what's happening with your boys, you know. But yeah, well, the boys here are on the way back out. Players out of the dressing rooms, onto the pitch for the second half. Referee will join them very shortly. And we will get prepared for the second 45 minutes with Everton in total control, leading by four goals to nil. It's been a wonderful first half, and uh, Paul Tate will want more of the same. Just uh, having a look around, see whether there's been any changes, not from the Everton uh, perspective. It's uh, as you were.
Confirmation of the change that the visitors have made. The uh, skipper Ryan Lowe did get injured in the first half, has had to go off, and Milton Oni has come on for him, as you can see there. And it will be Colchester to get us underway for the second half. And Everton will attack from right to left as we look in the uh, second 45 minutes. If they can uh, back another four goals, oh my word, we will all be very happy. I'm getting greedy now. <laughs> be interesting to see how they manage this though. Four nil for half time, far far the superior team. It's easy to get complacent and make poor decisions. Yeah. So I'm sure that's what the message would have been at half time from Paul Tate. You know, go out there, stay professional, keep doing the right things. And as we've reiterated a couple of times, it really is about. Uh, performance levels at this uh, this uh, this level of the level of the game, as well as uh, as well as the results. So um, making sure that the performance is equally as good in this half, I'm sure that's paramount in terms of uh, Paul Tate and Keith Sutherland's message to the, these young Everton players. And of course, the message from uh, the Colchester uh, coach Dave Huzzy will uh, have been, you know, let's make sure we don't concede again. Win the second half, yeah. I imagine, yeah. which which uh, I think will be a challenge, but I'm sure that that would have been the message. I mean, even at the very senior level of, of football, when a team does go uh, three or four goals up in the first half, how often do you fail to see them add to their tally because the response from the opposition changes at exactly in the second 45 minutes? Yeah, I think the mentality shifts, doesn't it, as well? You are four, yeah. you're four and a up, obviously, that intensity to, with, with your attacks is probably not quite the same, but um, you know, it's important they manage the, get, manage the game and, uh, and keep moving the ball. Free kick, Everton. Isaac Tice over it and Joe Anderson plays it into Campbell. And ball too far ahead of Lampata. Free kick awarded as well for Colchester. Who have made just that one change in Com half time. Competitive young Pata, isn't he? Likes to get close, likes yeah. to likes to cop likes to make contact, is aggressive. I, I like the way he presses, really, really competitive. Not yeah. someone who uh, who the opposition would enjoy playing against when he presses with with that intensity and that competitiveness. I should say for a 17-year-old as well, he's uh, taken his opportunity this season. Everton leading by four goals to nil. Manchester determined to put up a, a much improved show in the second half and immediately Fevrier goes down the right-hand side and does well to get to the dead ball line. He just overran that. I think that went out of play, confirmed. The referee's whistle has blown. Lines been flagged on this near side. Great run down this near side, wasn't it? Took mm. a couple on and really positive, really positive in possession there and skipped past a couple of Everton defenders. That was really positive. He's a solid unit, isn't he? He's a, looks a powerful young man. And uh, got himself to the dead ball line, but just overran it, the 19-year-old. Won't miss him in them lime, lime green, aluminous boots either. <laughs> and here he goes. Powerful surge, but uh, a heavy touch at the end. Just took the ball over the uh, over the white line. Goal kick played short. Welsh picked up by Colchester. And for substitutes money couldn't keep it and already there's a bit more pressure on the ball when Everton have it from Colchester that determination and desire I suppose to as uh, Nick said to win the second half put on a, a fine show interesting there that Colchester's players were stood right on Everton high press ready to press them and Everton still still decided to try and play out from the back and that might have been a message from the coaching team at at half time work on them playing out from the back patterns work on playing out from the back under pressure and try and get try and get through Colchester's press but I thought it was quite interesting that Everton still decided to try and play out from the back even though Colchester's players were set up for that for that high press well here comes the free kick that Everton have conceded he whipped into the penalty area and uh, Isaac Price is there to do the necessary put it into touch and a throw in on that far side. Everton organised. Plenty behind the ball. And they will have to defend the Colchester corner. And 
that's the signal for their uh, centre backs to get forward into the opposition penalty area. So inside the Edwards and Kennedy forward inside the Everton penalty area, they'll be the uh, the threat I would presume from this corner as it's played in and Price is there again to meet it doing his job getting the ball away it's sent back in by uh, Edrier but again Everton playing their way out flipped forward by Welsh and good skill by uh, Keanu he's going to get himself a free kick comfortable in possession there eyes at Price it just drops down he, he's, he's under a bit of pressure in his defensive third and just pops a lovely first time pass to Reese Welsh and uh, managed to play forward. Good turn there by Kiate and uh, takes the foul. Yeah, he beaten his man, hadn't he? So uh, brought down up towards Cannon. Just uh, ball played behind and Pata. Picked up by Oni. There's Fabio back for. Uh, and the Kennedy to use his goalkeeper. It's given away a bit cheaply there by Tom Cannon, wasn't it? Yeah, so looking to win it back quickly. Ball played forward by Coughlin. Arrives at the feet of uh, Piate, but he couldn't keep it. He was under challenge from the Colchester defender. And it's good work by Liam Higgins to get back and uh, use his goalkeeper. Here's Welsh. Higgins. Clamping. Sawyer. Manchester keeping the ball, making Everton work, trying to play one in behind, but Mackenzie Hunt was wary of that. And Everton worked their way out again into the path of Isaac Price. And he's got space in front of him, and he uses Jan Pata. Cut back for Price. Real flowing football from Everton in the final effort from Isaac Price, held by the goalkeeper. Great football, wasn't it? Played through Colchester. Good play by Isaac Price, received it deep and on the half turn, played forward. Wasn't just happy to, to watch that pass, then followed on. Followed his pass with his run, found himself uh, get a shot off from the edge of the box, hits the target. Probably didn't catch it just clean enough, but good play from Isaac. Would have been some goal, and uh, he converted. No free kick awarded there. Referee had a good look at that, but nothing forthcoming as far as Higgins was concerned. A bit more competitive, Colchester, this, this half. A bit more bite to their tackles. Everton need to move the ball a little bit quicker just to stay out of trouble. Don't invite pressure. Don't invite any of that contact. Yeah, Keep moving the ball a bit quicker. They've certainly had a message, haven't they? And uh, message received. I think that's fair enough. I think that's to be expected if you're, if you're a Colchester player or member of staff, I think. 4-0 down, why not? Why not go and go and try and impose yourself on the game and be aggressive and show the right attitude? And here they are again with uh, Pedrier down that right hand side. Played in for uh and for Wose. It's, uh, not testing goalkeeper Luban in uh, between the posts for Everton. Keep looking to play out from the back, Everton got themselves into trouble a couple of times so far with this more aggressive high press from Colchester and here we go again playing out short from the back trying to practice them playing out from the back patterns to get free and, and through Colchester and up the pitch and this ball then is uh, picked up by Colchester and uh, Miranda Marshall back with Collins beaten four times in the first half and put themselves in front inside the opening minute if you've just joined us. Goal scorers tonight, Tom Cannon, Arte has two, and Mackenzie Hunt also on the score sheet. Everton four, Colchester nil. Everton very much on course for their first victory in this uh, Premier League Cup this season. Chester into Everton territory. Clamping. 
One back by Everton. Higgins for uh, Price and now Coughlin. Again, he's not really put a foot wrong. He'll be uh, very pleased with his work tonight. Campbell's ball forward and uh, Price goes to ground. The referee shakes his head. And Colchester have it with substitutes Oni. Played out wide for Sawyer. Clamp in. And that's again his overrun and behind for an Everton goal kick. But it wasn't bad football. No, it's good streaming forward. These Colchester players now really looking to uh, to at least get a goal back for their side and bodies forward, looking forward, looking to run to run forward, pass forward. And I think the, the opportunity here for Everton will be will be on the counter attack. We spoke about are they going to make a couple of a uh, couple of substitutions? I think there's, uh, there's at least one coming now. Alan. Yeah, uh, Isaac Heath is coming on. Liam Higgins is the player being withdrawn so 10 minutes into the second half and Isaac Heath is on for Everton the 18 year old taking the place of uh, Liam Higgins and we'll see whether there's any uh, reshuffle in terms of uh, formation or positions doesn't look like it he's going to slot straight in there yeah it's a good opportunity isn't it we spoke about it at the half time uh, how many of these young players are going to get on for Everton now and good opportunity for Isaac Heath to get on in that uh, that right wing back position so the first change from full Tate Everton leading 4-0 Colchester putting up more of a fight in this second half and here they come Pedro down the right hand side again using his power and pace and winning the corner across came Campbell to intervene So Colchester determined to put on a show in the second half. Been positive, hasn't he, down this right hand side the second half so far. Good defending, shepherded it out. Had to concede the corner though. Corner, which again sees Everton defending numbers. Every man back inside the penalty area. And the keeper is there to punch away. Well done by Jan Pater. Back with Yates. Colchester of. Uh, Got the number forward, but not now. Forced back to the goalkeeper who's midway inside his own half to launch one forward out to the visitor's right. Put out of play by Mackenzie Hunt. Everton happy to sit a bit deeper, aren't they? And probably look to hit Colchester on the counter, as I was saying, and uh, not much interest in getting loads of uh, loads of pressure on higher up the pitch and just inviting inviting Colchester on and then looking to hit on the break, but. Uh, been more positive from Colchester this half. They've had more possession, won the ball higher up. Indeed, as uh, Marshall plays it across for uh, Edwards. Clampton. Uh, and from his uh, left back berth. Good work back to the goalkeeper again as Everton press. Cannon goes to close down Kennedy. And the long ball forward is uh, cut out by Isaac Heath, who's just on for Everton as a substitute for Higgins. The ball up towards uh, Piatti, who couldn't uh, make it stick. Both the Everton centre forwards, they've, they've shown one side to their game in terms of running in behind in the first half and looking at threat on goal. I think now they need to secure possession of the ball when the ball comes up to up to them in like that situation with uh, Katia Chiati there. The ball comes up and needs to stick now and let Everton just build off the both of them and get up the pitch a little bit higher. Different part of the game for them to practice really the two yeah. centre boards. Yeah indeed. Here's uh, Hunt, Campbell back with Anderson inside the penalty area it's all one touch football from Everton to try and play their way out but they're closed down by the visitors substitutes Oni trying to get a foot in and Colchester have seen much more of the ball in this uh, second half of their own making because uh, they've been determined to go home with some pride and here's Fevrier cutting the ball back into the penalty area maybe an opportunity for a shot at goal it's come out to Clampin he uses Sawyer Sawyer's ball in is gathered by Levan in the uh, Everton goal once more well held 
no problems for the Everton keeper. He kicked in February down this, down this right hand side for Colchester, hasn't he? Skips past Mackenzie Hunt there, and uh, he has been he's been really positive this second half for the for the visitors. He's quite an athlete, really, more than a footballer, I think. <laughs> he seems it's to a be good a, size, doesn't he? Power, yeah. powerful, and quite pacey. Yeah, could be a hundred meter sprinter or something. Here he is again. This time it's a left foot of delivery, digged into the penalty area. That wasn't a bad ball in. Good ball, yeah. And it required a, a touch, but uh, Bennett inside the penalty area just couldn't stretch far enough. He might have got the nearest nearest of touches on it, but there was no problem for uh, Sam Luke the ban in the uh, Everton goal. Clean sheet for him is the order of the night now. Here's Reese Welsh. Welsh with the ball forward. He's uh, spotted Mackenzie Hunt and he found him brilliantly. He's laid it off for Cannon. Cannon still has it for Everton and is fouled about seven or eight yards outside the box. As soon as that ball falls to Tom Cannon, you can see that the only thing on his mind is to try and get a shot away and uh, just wouldn't sit right for him, protected it well and, and got himself a free kick. But as soon as it falls fall to him, you could just see, I could read his mind. He was looking for that opportunity to get a, to get a strike off and get a shot at goal. It was a good long searching ball as well from Reese Welch in the first instance, wasn't it? And he picked out Mackenzie Hunt and found Cannon. And uh, the end result is this free kick. So Going to be another change first before the free kick. So Jan Patter's done his bit. He's off, and Luke Butterfield is coming on for Everton. Seventeen-year-old off, and the goalkeeper is coming on. Seventeen-year-old on, is it? I think. So Jack Barrett is coming on. So, as he did at Birmingham actually last week in the second half, he uh, came on, and uh, he's getting getting an opportunity here in the second period. Is Barrett right? Everton free kick, Cannon, brilliant, not too far away. Tom Cannon rifled that one and uh, the goalkeeper again scrambling across his goal relieved to see it just uh, past his left hand post great strike wasn't it hit it really well goalkeeper was scrambling as you say and uh, spoke about trying to get his shot off earlier but didn't want to waste that opportunity either and uh, just struck the outside of the post didn't it half a yard the other yeah. side that was in very very close from uh, Cannon Everton close to a fifth Here they are with Mackenzie Hunt. Into Isaac Price. Everton look threatening here. Price trying to play in Sam Coughlin. Oh, that would have been a dream debut if he'd have got through on goal. <laughs> a taste for it. I was surprised with Isaac there. As he ran through and he had runners going through, I thought he'd pick somebody out, but unfortunate. But just re establishing themselves in the game now, Everton. Yeah. Here's uh, Price again. Oh. Sorry, Heath, I should say, uh, Butterfield, I should say, getting the ball forward. Get it right, Alan. Chance maybe for Chiarte, did he? That was a foul. foul. Yeah, it looked like a foul yeah, on the edge of the foul. penalty area. Yeah. There was no real attempt to play the ball from the uh, Colchester defender. I think Chiarte looked at the referee, the referee looked at him, and uh, there was no whistle. And a bit more possession now for Everton. After the... Uh, Fiery opening to the uh, second half from Colchester. Came out with a bit more fight and determination, that is for sure. Everton have just managed to hang on, hang on to possession for a bit longer, haven't they? Took the sting out of that Colchester press and what, what Col Colchester aggression really out when they had, didn't have the ball and they just managed to get a few more passes off Everton now and secured secured the ball in midfield, secured the ball in, in uh, attacking areas and... Uh, as I say earlier, just managed to re-establish themselves in the half. Here's Tom, here's Tom Cannon again, edge of the penalty, he missed kicks completely. Gets back on his feet and still has the ball. And played in again towards uh, Piate. And work clear eventually by Colchester, who defend on the edge of their 18-yard box. Played back by uh, Isaac Heath.
Campbell. Shannon. Hunt. Back with Campbell. Slight change for Everton in that Sam Coffin has been pushed a little further forward following the uh, introduction of Butterfield. Yeah, he seems to be the one running through now, doesn't he? Yeah. So a bit more license for him to get forward. Everton do have a corner here. An opportunity to throw one into the penalty area again. Everton four, Colchester nil. Made some good runs tonight, uh, Katia Kiate. He's, when he's when he's looked to run through and and penetrate that back line of Colchester, and inevitably he's been found by the midfield players and been a real thorn in the, the side with his with his running and his, with his movement in behind. Yeah, and he'd be delighted to have got a couple of goals as well. A hat trick would cap a fine night for him. His time yet. Corner Everton. Maybe they'll go short. Sam Coffin trying to make himself available. It's pulled outside the penalty area for uh, Butterfield, who has a crack from uh, just about the edge of the box, blocked inside the penalty area. Heath plays it out wide again. Here's uh, Butterfield letting the ball run, and Price can go on. Oh, and he's uh, clipped. Just taken in full stride there. Be a yellow card, I think the, the referee is going to show as well. Shows his class. Case. Shows his class there, Isaac Price, doesn't he? When he picks it up and drifts, drifts past the uh, Colchester, Colchester midfield players, and uh, just manages, just manages to just carry and drift the ball really well past a couple, and gets cynically, cynically uh, yeah. taken down. I think that is a booking. Ball, the ball was already gone, and he got, when he gets taken down, and, uh, yeah, definitely a booking. I think the referee was right on that occasion to brandish the yellow. And a free kick for Everton and Shoes. Welch has gone forward into the 18-yard box. Joe Anderson and Campbell there as well. And the final effort was, uh, well, it was wide at the keeper's right-hand post, but uh, not too far wide. It was uh, Hunt who hit it, I think. The uh, left boot from the yeah just yeah. curled in and keeper knew it was going wide actually. Good effort across the face of goal, just surprising the uh, no Everton no Everton forward just coming across the goalkeeper there might have just managed to get a tap it in but good strike. A bit better from Everton now they move the game back into their own attacking half and uh, managed to put Colchester back under possession. Yeah, been better the last ten minutes of uh, Everton. Taking the uh, sting out of the Manchester early uh, promise in the second half, but here they come now. Chance for Bennett, who's forced wide in the end. Still might materialise in something, and the effort in on goal is well blocked. It was uh, an effort from Anifawose, which was blocked well by Everton. They got bodies back in the end, but uh, they were a little exposed prior to that. And Colchester come again. This time it's uh, Miranda Marshall playing it wide for Fevrier. And kept in play just up towards Cannon. Well played. Back with Campbell. Hunt. Price has to fend off two. Gets a free kick. Takes it quickly for Sam Coughlin. Well worked by Everton. Here's Cannon. Coughlin's making the run forward. There's the ball into his path just too far ahead of him. He, he would have looked to flick it through to Kiate, I think. Yeah, it was a good move, wasn't it? Again, just a little bit loose that final pass, but great move from, from Everton. And um, Coughlin's definitely been released further forward, hasn't he? He's, he's, yeah. His game's changed now. He's looking to run through, looking to uh, join, the, join the attackers and run beyond. And uh, good to see two different facets of, of his game. Yes, indeed, yeah. Here is Coughlin. Right. Not a foul on Mackenzie Hunt. A sliding challenge, which was uh, a little rash. Interesting little battle developed here, second half on He's the side. Book him as well. So, uh, yeah, Jaden Fevrier is uh, shown the yellow. When Mackenzie Hunt's ran forward like this, he's caused Fevrier problems defensively, and then and likewise going the opposite way. I think Fevrier's caused uh, Mackenzie Hunt problems when when he's got in him behind. So um, yeah, it's been intriguing. Yeah, good good duel, good duel developing down this side of the pitch. Free kick, Everton. 
And again, the boys from the back are in the box. Colchester are going to make a change. Or a double change very shortly. Probably not wise to do it just now with the free kick looming. Price sends it in and it doesn't quite uh, meet uh, Tom Cannon's head or he can't quite direct the ball goalwards. Yeah, I think Joe Anderson was trying to wake his way into the box as well then and just either either slipped or just got just got ragged down at the back post there, just trying to make his way into the box, but uh, asked the referee a question, nothing was given. Double change then, James Drake, Jaden Drake Thomas is coming on, Gene Kennedy going off. And I think uh, Bennett is also being withdrawn here. Information of that change on the way. So, Kai Redgrave into the action. Bennett, the man replaced. Double change made by Colchester. And replacing it for 16, Ryan Carpin. Triple change. So, three changes from Colchester. See what impact that has on a on how they fare. Ball cleared by uh, Everton substitute goalkeeper Jack Barrett with some force through to his opposite number. So 19 minutes of the 90 to play. Here's uh, Drake's Thomas immediately on the ball. To uh, every eight. Nicked away by Mackenzie Hunt. Here's Price. Again, Everton trying to play their way out, but uh, the ball nicked by Colchester. And they don't get the benefit of the throw. It's Everton's. And they haven't added to their goal tally in this second half. But it's still been uh, impressive and certainly uh, interesting to watch. With the substitutions as well that uh, just changed the shape of the game for a few of these Everton players. We were spoiled, Alan, with the, with the four goals in the first half. And so Colchester have conceded 12 in their last two, both of those against Southampton, so uh, a bit of chastening experience for them of late. Anderson. Here's uh, Luke Butterfield. Welsh. Like Joe Anderson and, uh, and, and Rick Welsh at the back for Everton, they play with real authority and they do the right things and there's nothing too complicated about them, they make good decisions, look real... Uh, I say, I say as Joe Anderson gives it away. <laughs> as he lost <laughs> one straight through to the goalkeeper. Every other time other than that, he's made a real good decision yeah. and uh, they, they look real, uh, real solid, solid types in terms of character and uh, how they go about the game and uh, it's good to see uh, and, and really, does, really does make a good impression even when they've not had lows to do in terms of their defending the way they've gone about it I think it's been yeah. first class we talk about their their understanding I suppose uh, they've figured in in so many of the games this season uh, it's the 16th start 16th appearance for Welsh uh, for Campbell the 16th and, and for Anderson the 18th in the under 21s this season so they should have a decent understanding shouldn't they and it's a bedrock for Everton to a sort of foundation for them to build on really um, when you can get continuity with uh, players playing together, which is not always possible at this sort of level. No, definitely not. And it's uh, it's it's really good for the football club that they've got such such good players um, in that back line and at the level who are who are doing who are doing really well. And even the game tonight, as I say, this a little bit probably more more easier for them in terms of their defensive contributions. The way they've gone about it, I think's been I think's been really professional, and I, I think that's really good signs in terms of. 
then their development uh, as they go through through their careers. And uh, I think uh, Paul Tate, Keith Southern will be really pleased with uh, with how they've gone about it, having been so established at this level. They haven't taken any any liberties or chances with the football. And uh, another good pass there from Joe Anderson. Yeah, straight onto the boot of Mackenzie Hunt, into the penalty area, pulling it back. The dummy is superb, and there is the hat trick. What a finish as well for Ketia Kayate. Battered home after a wonderful long ball to Mackenzie Hunt, and the cutback was precise and perfect. And the finish, likewise. What a strike. Everton 5, Colchester 0. Clinical, wasn't it? Great run behind by Mackenzie Hunt. Uh, Mackenzie Hunt, superb pass by Joe Anderson, and uh, then li little dummy in the middle of the middle of the middle of the box. And as you say, clinical finish there from uh, Katia Kiate. I think that was Sam Coughlin with the uh, with the dummy. No, it was Isaac Price, was it, with the dummy? And uh, my word, the goalkeeper had no chance. A cutback, superb from Mackenzie Hunt. And there, the finish, well taken, presented to him. He's had a great night, hasn't he? Great finish, was, great finish, wasn't it? <laughs> and, uh, as he came onto that on his left foot, that could have, that, that could have, could have lost control of that strike, but uh, brilliant finish into the top corner. And confirmation of the changes here, just seeing who's gone off. It's uh, Sam Coughlin and uh, Mackenzie Hunt have uh, made way and a chance for... Odin Samuel Smith and Troy Smickle James. He's had a good night, Hunt. And uh, also Sam Coughlin will be really happy yeah. with his uh, with his performance tonight, won't he? Well, it's been a great display by Everton. And uh, Kiate is on the ball now, laying it off for Tom Cannon. Will be absolutely delighted with the way it's gone. And maybe his night's not finished yet. He's uh, He'll be looking for more goals, <laughs> definitely. Been a wonderful evening. He want the match ball now, won't he? You still go home with the match ball at this level? I know I did back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> Why not? Why not? So 5 0 Everton lead and uh, a hat trick and uh, three very different goals as well. Yeah, that's taken them well. Yeah, that was well worked, wasn't it? Because I think at the start of this half as well, Colchester had come out and they pressed higher. They'd run, they'd run a bit harder at the top end of the pitch. They put Everton under probably the most pressure they've been un been under within the game, and Everton have seen that out or feel like they've seen that out now and then. Go on to get the the next goal in the game was important, and now now they're back on the attack. Yeah, here's uh, Luke Butterfield. The little back heel was too far ahead of Elijah Campbell. He won't give it up though because he forced. The ball back to uh, Colchester's goalkeeper who clears and uh, breaks Thomas has it under control finally for the visitors. And get it forward to the uh, halfway line almost for Anifa Wose. Had a couple of efforts on goal tonight. Uh, Anifa Wose, one of them went very close in the first half. But uh, Colchester have not managed as yet to breach this Everton defence. And Jack Barrett is the man between the posts now for Everton, having come on in this second half. Signed a new contract or an extended contract to take him through to uh, next summer, June of 2023. We'll see what develops from there for Barrett. Good flow to the Everton performance still, isn't there? Sometimes when you make a lot of substitutions, yeah. they, they can lose the flow of course. Uh, within the team, but actually the flows remain the same and uh, back on the attack and still playing some really good stuff this Everton team. They are indeed. And that ball played on by uh, Smithle James out for uh, the right hand side to uh, Isaac Heath. He was just held up by uh, Clampin. Not Clampin, I should say, he's been replaced by uh, it was Freddie Price out there. Good work by Isaac Price there, just out of possession and uh, managed to just press and win the ball back and it's it's good to see him still snapping at the heels of these Colchester mm. players. Yeah, the desire and attitude has certainly been right from Everton tonight. Been spot on and I think Paul Tate and Keith Southern will be absolutely delighted with the uh, the attitude of, uh, as I say, the, the one or two more senior, if you like, players at this level, but also yeah. these younger players that have gone on as well and uh, 
been a real good night's work so far, 80 minutes in, and it couldn't have gone any better for Everton. Five goals and a terrific performance. And you look at the players that are on now, like Odin Samuel Smith and uh, Troy Smickle James, a real good night for them as well to get an opportunity and a run out. And bodes well for the future as well, that yeah. they can get them onto, onto the pitch at, at such a young age. That bodes really well, and uh, not only for their, for their careers, but for, for the Everton under 20 ones. He's February again trying to uh, weave his way into the penalty area with pace and power. Ball put back in by uh, Yates and uh, the eventual flicked header was not troubling goalkeeper Jack Barrett. Just uh, over the angle, the header from uh, Freddie Price. And the goal kick as we uh, enter the final 10 minutes of the 90. Well, job done all right for Everton. Maybe we could have said that from the opening minute. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, set, certainly set us up for this type of performance, didn't it, that start? Did indeed. It'll be a long old old journey back down, uh, yeah. back down to Essex for Col for these Colchester uh, yeah. boys. Unfortunately, early hours of the morning before the, they can get their heads down. Well, they can try on the coach. Every eight for uh, Yates. Yates tried to deliver, couldn't wrap his foot around it. Will be an Everton goal kick. Here's Price. Isaac Price for Everton. Right from inside his own 18-yard uh, box, carried the ball forward, and he's continued his run to the edge of the penalty area. He might just get on the end of it. Uh, the offside flag will prevent uh, anything from happening here. Ball. Ball quite tight. Up in the back of the net. But yeah, quite tight. But it shows his class again, Isaac Price, doesn't he? He's, he really is a, a class above some of these Colchester players and drifts drifts through the drifts through the through the pitch, plays off the front, continues his run. Just slightly offside, but good play. Here's Heath. Welsh. And Anderson. Campbell. It'll be interesting to see how many of these lads actually play on Saturday because uh, you would think that Paul Tate will want a bit of, let's use the term, experience again for, for next Tuesday night at uh, Lincoln. Yeah, it is interesting, but he's experienced Paul Tate at this level and he's an experienced coach and. Uh, Working out minutes for, for each player and who plays in what game is part of the role of the staff. There's Ooh, a terrific has staff to make here. A save there, and it's uh, cleared by Anderson. It might be coming back in from February. It is, and there's work to do, and it's fired home in the end. And it's Car Kai Redgrave who got the volleyed effort over and above the outstretched arm of Jack Barrett, and Colchester do have a goal back. Kai Redgrave volleys home, and Colchester have a consolation strike they'll be disappointed with that the players and staff of Everton it's uh, it's a game where they, they really should be valuing that clean sheet and uh, we're disappointed that they've managed to concede one there yeah took a deflection on the way and I think a couple of Everton defenders just trying to get the block on this effort and it just looped over uh, Barrett no real chance for him but uh, Redgrave will take the credits the goal scorer and 5-1 and that will be disappointing for uh, defenders and goalkeeper alike but there's a chance now for Tom Cannon to get Everton a six goal and he's done exactly that the man who got it up and running in the opening minutes has fired Everton a sixth in the 84th minute of this game Everton six Colchester one two for Tom Cannon tonight another fine finish from him Great response, wasn't it, from Everton? I just spoke about they'll be disappointed to, to lose that clean sheet, but straight up the other end and score. And that's where Tom Cannon, for me, is absolutely outstanding. When he's running through on goal, the timing of his movement in behind, and when he gets in, the composure he shows, just to side foot it into the near post. But really high quality finish, high quality movement by Tom Cannon, and a reminder of, of what he's good at there.
Wow, he ticked his spot there because there wasn't too much to aim at at that near post, but he squeezed it in and he knew exactly where he was placing it. As soon as the pass goes through, you expect him to score, and that's, that's a sign of a, of a real high-quality finisher because uh, you don't expect him to miss. I've seen him over the last couple of years, and when he gets into them positions, uh, the, the, the result is usually a goal, so he'll be, he'll be delighted with, uh, with another goal. He'll be uh, breathing down the neck of uh, the Everton senior strikers to... Uh, get a starting berth in the Premier League. Tom Cannon, he's had an opportunity, of course, two appearances at Bournemouth, one in the League Cup, one in the Premier League before the break for the World Cup. And more defending for Everton now and a save for Jack Barrett to make, pushing it behind for the corner. I think that's his role, Tom Cannon, now. I, I think back to when I was a young striker at the, uh, here at the football club and I, I was very acutely aware it was in the reserve, reserve league at the time, but... My, my job was to add as much pressure as possible by scoring as many goals as possible uh, as a reserve team player, as a, as a young player coming through, and that was always my motivation in these types of games. Keep scoring, keep yeah. your name being, keep your name being mentioned, keep, keep your sort of your name on the the uh, the end of the tongue of the manager. And uh, he's managed to do that again tonight, another couple of goals, and that's all he can keep doing. Yeah, put pressure on those uh, ahead of you. And uh, Tom Cannon is certainly doing that. That is his thirteenth. Uh, of this under-21 season in various competitions. I think if you get to uh, to the start of December with 13 goals, then you, mm. you're well on the way to having a really good season. And uh, as I say, he's got to keep scoring, got to keep playing well. And uh, hopefully, as he as he as the, the season goes, he'll get more opportunities. Everton leading by six goals to one. Said there'd be goals tonight. And Everton may not have finished yet. Here's the uh, hat-trick man, Kiyate, with a great ball in for Cannon, who fancy a hat-trick himself, but he sets it up unselfishly for Isaac Price to slot into an empty net. That is brilliant from Everton. The crossfield ball, the cannon control, and the side foot finish. A comfortable one for Isaac Price. Everton hits seven. Superb goal again. What a diagonal pass by Kataya Kiyate. What a touch and take by Tom Cannon. I can't believe he didn't shoot, but lovely footwork just to just to nip it past the defender. The awareness just to square it back to Isaac Price. Great supporting run by him. Here Tom Cannon receives. I'm thinking he's shooting all day long. But what a what a, what a, a square pass there. Just to Isaac Price, who can't miss, puts it into the empty net. Superb goal again from Everton. Well, great play and real unselfish play as well from Tom Cannon, especially when you're on a hat-trick. <laughs> it's a, a real good cutback after he uh, shaped to shoot, certainly he fooled the goalkeeper completely. And Everton have seven, just as uh, Southampton did against Colchester last time out. The result was 7-1. It is 7-1 here tonight. Here's Luke Butterfield. Kiate again, and he's gone past his man with ease. Yates left in his uh, wake, and the ball will fall here for <laughs> Isaac Keith, who should have really uh, got Everton an eighth. But everyone's wanting in on the act, aren't they? He should have, he should have scored there at Isaac, and great play again by Kate right in front of us. And he's been really positive, he's enjoyed his night, isn't he? Great ball in as well. And uh, I thought that'd be the eighth for Everton, but just over the bar. Just over the bar from uh, Isaac Heath on as a substitute in this second half, volleyed over the crossbar. Everton finishing with a real flourish. Inside the final couple of minutes of the 90. And Colchester looking for another consolation as Fevrier plays the ball in, but uh, the man who was closest to it, the goal scorer Kai Redgrave, couldn't uh, get near enough. So, a goal kick for uh, Everton. And it's been a real good night's work. Plenty to look back on uh, for the Everton coaching staff. Lots of highlights. A hat-trick. A couple of goals for Tom Cannon. Impressive debuts. The likes of Sam Coughlin. Yeah, very good night indeed. Great attacking play, hasn't there as well? When you saw seven goals, the attacking play, the movement, yeah. the passing of the football, the decision making in that mid to final third, all been absolutely outstanding by Everton. 
and uh, far too superior run for this uh, for this Colchester team. They'll just want the final whistle, no doubt. Do you think the referee will take pity on them as we're inside the final minute? Stoppage time might just be a, a couple might, of minutes. We might get as much stoppage time as we've had at the World Cup when <laughs> we're here for another 10, 15 minutes. 10 minutes, minutes yeah. or so, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, that's a feature that I have uh, been in agreement with because uh, I often say, commentating on Premier League matches, that we never get the requisite amount of stoppage time. I'm exactly the same on the, on the touchline in League 2 to the fourth official. You never seem to get the amount of stoppage yeah. time that, uh, that that's due and you're always a minute or two, three, four minutes short. Yeah. I think it's been quite refreshing to see, to be honest. Stoppage time is quite often determined by the state of the game as opposed to the... Uh, required amount and uh, that has just been confirmed now because we're only going to have two minutes two minutes then of stoppage time to play I can understand that in these uh, circumstances Everton though will push forward and try and get another they're not done yet and here's Tom Cannon he's got a hat-trick in his thoughts as he tries to work the ball on his right foot he was just closed down at the last there by Drake's Thomas and the challenge prevented him getting a clear shot on goal. Fabrié, who's uh, been a prominent figure for Colchester in this second half. Still time, Drake's Thomas curls one, and he scores brilliantly. A curling left-footed effort, hit with some pace as well from substitute Jaden Drake's Thomas, and that got the better of Jack Barrett in the Everton goal to give Colchester another and it probably will finish now Everton 7 Colchester 2 outstanding strike that from Drake's Thomas receives it shifts it curling effort a little bit like Mackenzie Hunt earlier in the first half but this time managed to get it under the bar and uh, we've not been we've not been short of goals tonight Alan have we not been short of quality goals either been some uh, wonderful strikes and some wonderful football on show all round and here they come again with Quixote finding Tom Cannon maybe we're not done yet Cannon's uh, squeezed it into the penalty area but not all the way through to a blue jersey running out of fingers and toes to count all these goals going in Alan yeah it's been a, a goal fest <laughs> goal fest at Southport this evening but kept us warm up here on the gantry which we're delighted about that is the final whistle a very good night's work indeed for Everton under 21s who've won this game by seven goals to two goals that uh, included a hat-trick for Kiate, two for Tom Cannon one for Mackenzie Hunt and Isaac Price alike and a couple of consolation goals for the visitors who for the second successive game concede seven but Everton and uh, Paul Tate and Keith Southern will be delighted with what they've seen tonight yeah really enjoyable performance from Everton wasn't it right from the, from the first minute they managed to score through Tom Cannon right up until the very last minute where there's a chance again for Tom Cannon so really enjoyable uh, evening's work from these Everton young players and uh, delighted to see them play with with such confidence, which is such assurance, uh, being able to move the football smoothly through the team and show some some uh, real good ta technical ability. And uh, uh, they'll have tougher tasks, no doubt, as they move throughout their season. But they can only put, uh, beat what's what's put in front of them. And uh, this Colchester team were well beaten tonight by an outstanding young Everton side. Mm. Everton not back in uh, Premier League two action until the 6th of January against West Ham, but they've got some important games before then. Uh, non bigger of course than the one against Lincoln next uh, Tuesday night in the EFL Trophy but uh, great night's work completed here tonight by Paul Tate's side they have beaten Colchester comprehensively it's finished Everton 7 Colchester United 2 Let's just have a quick look back then at the goals that won it for Everton. Tom Cannon getting it all underway inside the uh, opening minutes. Great control, latching onto a poor back pass. And he finished by getting the ball onto his left foot and finished really well. 
cut inside and rifled it home. It was a great start for Everton. And uh, they were two up inside the opening 20 minutes. This was the first for Ketia Kayate. All his own work, I would say. Riding the challenge, getting the ball back inside onto his left foot. And they have the confidence to just uh, get the better of the goalkeeper with ease, really. He played really well tonight. That was two. And the third was not long in coming either. This time, Tom Cannon fired in the goalkeeper, sprawling, pushed it away, only into the path of Mackenzie Hunt, who was in the right place at the right time to slot home for his third of the under-21 season. And that sent Everton three goals up. And having started the first half in such style inside the opening minute, they finished it in stoppage time at the end of the uh, first period with a fourth. And it was Kiate again on the end of it after good work by uh, Jan Pata, who won the ball back really well and just squared it back, 4-0 at the break and Everton were uh, very very comfortable indeed long ball forward from uh, the back from Anderson from Mackenzie Hunt the dummy from Price the finish from uh, Kiate the hat trick for him to, to his delight what a left footed finish great ball in from Mackenzie Hunt who picked him out might have been looking for Price but it was a wonderful dummy anyway uh, Everton did concede, unfortunately, having gone five goals to the good. They pulled a goal back through uh, Kai Redgrave, one of the second-half substitutes, volleyed home via a slight deflection. I don't think there's too much that uh, Jack Barrett could do about that, and Everton could not keep the clean sheet. So that was 5-1, but Everton responded almost instantly Tom Cannon latching onto that through ball and you just knew what would happen from there on in. He picked his spot, got the better of uh, goalkeeper Collins who was beaten for the sixth time on the evening. Tom Cannon getting his second of the night. A very cool, calm, composed finish from him. And the uh, seventh came moments later and this time it was unselfish from Cannon to cut the ball back for Isaac Price after a great crossfield ball as well from Kiate, the hat-trick hero and uh, Cannon declined the opportunity of a hat-trick and gave Isaac Price the chance to finish which he duly did giving Everton a seventh but the visitors weren't quite done and they got a great uh, second goal of their own brilliantly fired home left-footed by uh, Jaden Drakes Thomas. That completed the scoring. Nine goals on the night here at Southport. Everton getting seven of them. Everton seven, Colchester two. A good night's work indeed. Nick, thank you very much indeed for your company tonight and uh, excellent contribution as always. Nine goals to witness. Yeah, thanks, and as I say, really enjoyable, nice football and uh, nine goals. In the very first minute, Everton on the front foot, showing quality through Tom Cannon, all the way through the game. The attacking, the attacking quality was uh, was enjoyable to watch, and right until the end there, with with uh, with some some excellent finishes. So uh, great night's work from uh, from Everton's uh, under 21 team, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed the evening. Thanks very much indeed, Nick. Do join us on the Friday for uh, full coverage of the under 18s as they begin their FA Youth Cup campaign at Goodison against Reading. That will be on air on Friday evening, kick-off 7 o'clock. From Alan Irwin and Nick Chadwick here at Southport, thanks for your company. Good night. <laughs>